After the death of Mobad on the 12th of September, more evidences points to these five individuals as being responsible for his death. Number one, Sam Larry. Sam Larry, also known as Elegushi on the street of Lagos, was first known as a young boy to be Samson Albarika Balogun Eletu. It's funny how both people bear opposite of their names these days. Albarika in Yoruba, which is supposed to mean blessings, became sorrow to his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Eletu, after he was declared wanted for the death of former singer, rapper, and songwriter Mobad Imole. Sam Larry, who is from a royal background who are kingmakers, started as a show promoter and music influencer who became popular when the famous musician and Portable accused him of being the leader and founder of the One Million Boys Call. Portable dropped the allegation and claimed it was a misunderstanding after Sam Larry also put up a post warning Portable. This must have been where Naremali noticed the use of Sam Larry in his record label and life. The controversial singer reached out to Sam Larry, told him about his plans to make him part of his team, and this began the journey of two like minds who wanted not to only control the music industry and take advantage of young ignorant boys in exchange for money and fame, but will also do anything to achieve their goal. And with Sam Larry in the picture, everything became less stressful and more easy for Naira Mali. He felt like he had a Nigerian John Wick by his side who could make anything happen behind the scenes while he focused on the label, not until Mobad came into the picture. The late Iweti Olua Aloba, also known as Mobad or Imole, was supposed to be one of those young ignorant boys they would just play dangerous mind games with and later dumb. But looks like Mobad became a bone too hard to chew by making things difficult for Naira Mali and even the notorious Sam Larry. After Mobad left the record label, they didn't think they could trust him anymore to keep the label dead his secret, so he devised a plan of making Mobad depressed and commit suicide by assaulting, bullying, and harassing him wherever and whenever. But that didn't work either. Instead, it only made Mobad yearn for his freedom out of the label. It was time to play the last card and end Mobad, which happened to be successful, or so they thought, until the game turned and most of the videos in which he had assaulted the disease on set in Naramali's house and other places too many to mention went viral on social media. But what was more incriminating was the core conversation he was alleged to have had with the tout he employed for the Job. In the conversation where they were speaking Yoruba, he sounded excited when the anonymous voice told him Mobad was in the mortuary. Number 2. Naira Mali Aziz Fashola, who was studying business, started as an MC before encouraged by his close friends in Peckham, South London, to pursue his music career, which he began in 2014 and released his first EP, Gotta Dance. His name started growing more influence when he featured in Olamide's single, Is A Go, alongside Leo Cash, for the Super Eagles during the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Aziz Fashola, who, who claimed to love and admire the late legend Bob Mali and had derived his name Mali from him, got more prominence when he released his song, Amaya Yawu Boy. Taking advantage of his newfound fame, he established a fan base called Malians and also founded a record label called Malians Record, where he brought Mobad into the picture. Naira signed Iretiola into his record label in 2019. Unknown to Mobad, Malian Record Label isn't a regular record label since it was owned by a drug boss. However, Mobad signed the contract and became a Malian artist still in the dark until he was introduced to peddling of drugs, which he did at first. But including a spiritual oath to it became an issue for Mobad because of his Christian roots and also an issue for Naira Mali because he couldn't trust any artist his loyalty to secrecy without the oath taken. Then started the attack from Naira Mali on Mobad by sending his hitman Sam Larry to do his dirty jobs of assaulting and bullying Mobad in and after he left the label. After he left the label, Naira Mali and Sam Larry had to find a way to completely get him out of the way, which became a success on the 12th of September, or so he thought, until few minutes after Mobad was confirmed dead online, videos of how he had assaulted the late young star started trending on the internet. To top it off, Mobad declared him responsible for his premature death in a live video on Instagram. Of course, he denied it, but with his ex-artists and other elites bearing witness through online interviews and status, there was no way Mali could convince the public on believing otherwise. Number 3. NDLEA National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, which is an agency in Nigeria responsible for drug policy with the mandate to curtail illicit production, importation, exportation, sale of drug substances, also became a suspect to Nigerian when they first made Naira Mali, who was already suspected to be a drug lord, an ambassador of drug abuse campaign. Hello, have you seen Naira Mali ex sign artist? That should be evidence enough to already investigate his record label and detain him. But all we heard from Mr. Femi, the NDLEA spokesman, was the agency engaged Naira Mali to encourage him to use his skill and platforms to put out content that would discourage millions of his followers and Nigerian youth from drug abuse. Okay.
okay i smell a rat and collaboration here if not how do you give a sensitive position of this caliber to a well-known controversial artist who had a criminal record with afcc broke the country law twice and also sings songs that are disrespectful his cv already tells us that he is not the man for the job but the ndlea obviously had other plans which came into light in a video shared about them giving the late mobad a container of water that had substance only god and them knows the content of the substance but this is scary isn't the agency supposed to prevent and fight against harmful drugs coming into the country but instead they seem to behave like they are blinded towards the current occurrence of drug abuse in the country hiding behind their offices and chasing the wrong people god help us Number 4. Zeno Lasky Onide Aziz was just a young boy from Oku State on the street of Lagos who needed to make ends meet and could do anything to be famous and wealthy. He was also signed alongside Mobad Imole in 2019 into Malian Records. Although, at first, he was also in the dark about how the record label was run by his boss Naira Mali and his associate Sam Larry. But driven to make money and be famous, he didn't see a problem being a drug peddler, taking drugs or taking the oath of secrecy. Zeno, who was alleged to be Mobad's friend at the time, also did more Mobad think until the singer revealed in an interview that he didn't see Mobad as his friend. Wow. Maybe if Mobad had seen that interview earlier, he would have tread more carefully and not always confide in Zeno about what was going on with him and the boss. But Zeno, who had other plans and saw Mobad as a competition in getting all the labels attention, love, money and fame, became the ones that had ears and saw this as an opportunity and decided to become a snitch to the boss, telling the boss every plan and conversation he and Mobad always had. This became clear to Mobad after a raid by the NDLEA happened in Naira Mali's house. According to the late Mobad in a video, he attested to the fact that it was Zeno who had been snitching on him. Zeno, however, got what he wanted, but at the expense of Mobad's death. <laughs> Number 5. Mr. Joseph Aloba Mr. Joseph Aloba, the father to the late Mobad, hails from Ikorodu and attends the Celestia Church. While most fathers will do the most for their child, Mr. Joseph has shown himself to be the opposite and currently tagged confused, controversial and also one of those responsible for Mobad's death after he buried his son too sudden without an autopsy or good coffin. It was reported that they had to force the head of dead Mobad into his coffin and the chief of Ikorodu town even testified that if he hadn't stopped Mr. Joseph Aloba, he was ready to bury Mobad's body at midnight. This caused the outrage and questions amongst Nigerians on why he would want to bury his son so quickly without confirming if he was at least dead or the reason for his death. But if you ask me, now who I go ask? In another video, he revealed in an interview that Naramali had nothing to do with his son's death, even after all the evidence presented in the court of social media. In his words, he claimed Naramali just wanted to teach his son a lesson. This lesson was be the work to the dead kind of lesson. Coming out in another interview, he opened up to the media and claimed he buried his son quickly to fulfill tradition. In in Yoruba land, he claimed it is customary not to keep Mobad's dead corpse when both parents are still alive. 